Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the first non-Bundesliga review video for uh, the season. Yeah, I decided I'll do Premier League because I actually watched quite some. And while it was by far not as exciting as was the um, action in the German and in the Austrian Bundesliga, I think it's worthwhile because uh, there were quite a few big storylines. And of course, I've been listening now already to a few podcasts and so on and, uh, you know, Pre-season, major conclusions are, are being made first week of the season and suddenly uh, everyone is revamping, overreacting, blah, blah, blah. Hold your horses. Yes, it seems like that for certain teams with sizable fan bases, old patterns are creeping up again. That 100% certain. But after one game of the season, you cannot make a big call yet. You have to let it play out for a little bit. Remember Arsenal last year, starting three losses in a row. Spurs starting with three wins in a row. And then they completely reversed their fortunes. And only in the end, it got uh, to the point where Spurs is ahead of Arsenal again. So, you know, uh, a season is a marathon and not a sprint, I always like to say. So, and this season is anyway a weird one with the world, a huge World Cup break in the middle where Everything can change in that break. Uh, and I even think that now uh, Liverpool fans are down. Yeah, we will not win the title because we already are two points behind City. <sighs> I don't think this is necessarily the case because, you know, big play. There are more, I think there are more big players from City playing at the World Cup than there are for Liverpool. Although I think, think, think about it, the Holland is not at the World Cup. Amares is not at the World Cup. Yeah. It will be interesting. It, I think the, the Premier League will give us a whole lot of thrills that are still to come. Do not overreact. And I think it's the, the season will be a slow build. But uh, definitely, um, new season, old patterns. That's my conclusion from this weekend. And I mean you, Arsenal. I mean you, uh, Chelsea. I mean you, uh, Manchester United, in a way. So, yeah. Uh, I'm wearing Spurs, who actually finished the same way as uh, similar as they uh, they started as they finished last season. And now I know that the voting for which Spurs jersey to use in here is uh, not yet done, but I decided for this one since Spurs uh, popped up as being the top team of the of the teams that I have in my collection uh, to go with a jersey that is in a very comfortable lead and probably it will be this last season's jersey that will be hanging on the wall uh, there. Uh, having said that, um, I don't have many South Coast teams because both South Coast teams, Brighton and Bournemouth, would be top there. That's for sure too. Okay, so much for opening observations. We'll jump into the games. Crystal Palace Arsenal. I actually saw way more than I intended to. I thought I'll watch the Bundesliga start between Frankfurt and Bayern, which will be very, very exciting. Well, um, it started half an hour before that game. And let's say I more or less watched from minute five on because that other game was done and does it. Highly entertaining, but not exciting anymore. Uh, and yes, I missed a bunch of goals, but no. I do not regret that one. Uh, and I have to say, for the first 20, uh, up until the Hilfsberg goal, like Arsenal really look, look, look well. Arsenal had a fabulous preseason, winning all the, all the games. But for me, this is always, ooh, careful. Careful there, because you might get a little bit too excited. Um, now, how to say, I mean, they really play well, uh, especially the Gabriels, Gabriel Jesus, uh, Gabriel, Gabriel Martinelli, uh, were uh, popping up everywhere. And it was un unavoidable that they take the lead, um, with when Sinjenko, I think it was after cross, uh, he, uh, corner, he had, he, he was rather, he had, has it back down in, in a box and Martinelli had it in. It was fully deserved at that point. I, I don't know what happened then. Did they decide to hold, 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 hold back? Did uh, Crystal Palace uh, make some switches uh, to get into, in, into next gear? But from that moment on, I always had the feeling that Crystal Palace would have well deserved an equalizer. And especially, uh, I mean, Ramsdale had a good chance. Then Eze uh, should have converted in the second half. Um, and in the, in the end, it's an own goal uh, that decides the game uh, where, yes, 
maybe this is a sign of things to change because maybe last season Arsenal would have not won this game. I still want to say it looked a little bit like last season's Arsenal more than it looked like a new Arsenal. The so-called new Arsenal I saw only in the 20 minutes. Uh, so again, let's wait and see. Maybe Arsenal can um, ramp this up and play an entire uh, game this way. I thought they were flattered by the scoreline. I think Crystal Palace would have well deserved a point out of this one. Um, then, probably the most entertaining game of the ones that I saw uh, was Fulham against Liverpool. I didn't see much because that was exactly at my lunch, lunch break, so I was uh, sleeping through most of it. Um, but it was also a game where, honestly, uh, Liverpool was not Liverpool. Yes, they. Uh, I don't think a club really blamed, blamed it on a slow pitch. It just was that way, uh, but you know, I, I think he, Klopp was very much clear that he's very disappointed with uh, the way things went uh, and that his team didn't show up. He only, uh, in, in passing, Kakarov said, yeah, uh, the pitch was kind of dry, which is of course not good. Uh, but you know, it was Fulham who dug in and Mitrovic scoring two goals. Uh, a player that everyone was a little bit deriding because in previous Premier League seasons, he did not do it do as well. But you know, uh, he show, showed up and he seemingly, I mean, uh, full full and went really full out for about 60 minutes. And then they tried to hold on. I think this was more or less a tactic. And with the striker up front, uh, like Mitrovic, who is not fast, but you know, what well, well, he does, he hold, hold, holds a play, he draws fouls, he wastes time, you know, he does all the good things that you need to uh, stay in contention. And he heads it in, uh, and it's a 1-0 lead at, at, at half. I think Liverpool hit once the crossbar, but on the other side, uh, uh, Fulham also could have uh, hit an after after the break. Uh, a clear shot that probably should, should have gone in, just come straight out from the um, upright again. In the 64th, for, uh, finally Liverpool show up and get an equalizer. And what an equalizer was, when Darwin Nunes, the way he uh, makes a flick with the heel in, was really, really, uh, I mean, from once it's very impressive. If, if you see the replay, it also seems a little bit lucky because, you know, the goalie was there. But Ed, Ed was a remarkable goal, but it didn't last long because, uh, very Virgil van Dijk, I think he was completely so surprised of how slow me to reduce this, got his time and come completely off schoolboy defending. I mean, uh, while he got Mitrovic on the right side, dangling the leg outside, that didn't look good and clear penalty. Mitrovic set up, makes it 2 to 2 1. Unfortunately for Liverpool, um, it was another weird one. They would cross in. I think the Nunez wants to actually take, take it, but then it becomes an assist to Salah, who makes it 2 2. Uh, and, and then Henderson probably could have won it with a wide range shot. Uh, but yeah, Fulham deserved that point. And this was, to me, the most entertaining game uh, that I saw this weekend. Um, I saw the highlights of Spurs against Southampton because there were other games, uh, uh, other things happening. Um, despite James Rowe-Prowse giving Southampton in ugly jerseys, absolutely ugly away jerseys, um, gives them the lead. But then Spurs just kick it to it to not give it Sessinho and Daya uh turn the game before the half. Um Kulusevsky being instrumental in all of uh the this goal, Son going on. The one thing that I was surprised at, uh, four goals scored by Spurs and none of a Son and Kane shows you probably that Spurs is might be might be. And you know, I'm very careful. First game of the season might be the real deal. I think they have uh they had a pretty good transfer window. They might still add on. Kulusevsky actually gets the fourth one after an on goal. Uh but you know this was was such a freak on goal in a way. Uh cool goal, and I think Kulusevsky was definitely the player of that uh game. Uh we had a few other results of Saturday uh after a Bournemouth against Villa surprising 2 0 Leeds 2 1 over Wolves. I, I wanna see how this did uh, develop. I heard that Leeds actually played quite 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 nice and Wolves look dire as Newcastle get the expected win over Forest. I saw a bit of Everton Chelsea. Honestly, I am glad I didn't watch more. This was a snooze fest that was extended. It reminded me, I don't, this, this, this is no reference. Uh, South Korea against Bolivia at the 94 World Cup, a game that had like was played over 105 minutes because of so much stoppage time added. I think the referee forgot about uh, his watch or something like, like, like that. It was a nil-nil of the worst kind. 
it had almost that uh, written all over there as well, except that Chelsea actually were dangerous at certain occasions. Clear penalty, Jorginho in the ninth minute of stoppage time of the first half. Nine. It's crazy. Second half, I think they, uh, Sterling, the ball just didn't get to Sterling because he probably should have made it 2-0. Two, 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 uh, Chelsea very much work in progress. Chelsea with a transfer window that basically, yeah, everyone that we have, we sell them back to the original club for, club for less. Uh, Timo Werner is not gone. Lukaku is gone. Um, I want to reserve my judgment for Chelsea because, you know, uh, if Tuchel gets it together, it might actually work well. The question is, how motivated is he? The, I think it really comes down to that. But, you know, at least they get started Everton. And, you know, I think for Everton, you might want to worry a little bit because Chelsea were a little bit there for, for, for her taking. However, I think the two most talked results came then on Sunday. Um... Of course, first off, uh, Leicester squandered a 2-0 lead against Brentford. Uh, Leicester, who have not made a signing yet and lost Kasper Schmeichel, so I'm a little bit worried about them. I think they might go down now to average. United, everyone was so excited about their preseason. It looked all great. Then the Ronaldo drama comes and then the first game, game of the season with Brighton, a team that has a plan. And they take United apart at Old Trafford for their first ever win, uh, with Pascal Gross scoring both goals in the 30th and the 39th, and, and it was very well deserved. Yes, another freak on goal made it tight, but there was not too much coming from United, to be honest. Um, my biggest worries, I think that Ten Hag could turn it around. Could. You need to get rid of Ronaldo, which is a really, really tough task because no one wants to have Ronaldo at this moment, especially not at those wages. I think that's the big one. Uh, I hear no sporting Lisbon, but cannot really see it. We'll see. But none of the top teams want to have him. Uh, and so that needs, needs to happen. He needs to be given a lot of time. I think his initial lineup actually showed a little bit the path forward, which was is, is a good thing to see. Give it time, but at the moment, uh, of course, United are the butt of all jokes. And then West Ham against City. Uh, th that was, of all the games on Sunday, I said, that's the game I want to watch. I think West Ham is a team that could cause City a little bit of problem. And for about two to three minutes, they did. But then it became such a tedious game to watch. First of all, I really hate those uh, City jerseys in neon with the grey. Awful. And then City does what City does best, and West Ham just decide, yeah, uh, we cannot play with them, so let's sit back. And City are just gonna keep the ball, pass it around, keep the ball, pass it around, draw the position out. Yes, you could play faster, but no, we're gonna score anyway. And it twice, you put Holland in the right, right position, once for a penalty, that he uh, duly, duly converts after Ariola uh, came on to... Um, replace uh, Fabianski, which probably didn't help West Ham either. And then in the second half, uh, Van de Bruyne through ball. Sends Haaland 2-0, and Haaland has his debut. I think his father scored his first Premier League goal against West Ham. Now he does it for once. He did not score a hat-trick on a debut, but rather, rather impressive stuff. Uh, there, it's just tedious to watch. I, I really love to watch great teams and City is right up there but they might be the one team that I just love to watch because of lack of excitement they have figured it out we will score anyway no matter how you slice and dice it we just wait we pass the ball as long as we can until we have everyone such a drawn so out of position that we will inevitably score and now we have a guy who will inevitably score and a like with Bayern in Germany, although they are way more dom dominant at this moment, I think it will take probably a few weeks until the City team is fig figured out. They might kill themselves a little bit, but now they even have a penalty taker. So yeah, uh, take, say what was, what, what you want. It will be, um, yeah, not an interesting watch in many ways, but uh, it is impressive nonetheless. So very easy win for, for, for them. I have here uh, standings and adjusted standings. You know, it don't doesn't mean much at the beginning of, of the season, except that City have now a more 
clear lead over Liverpool and uh, who becomes champions. Um, maybe the one thing gets of interest in the adjusted standings, but I will maybe explain this at a later time and later video too. I have now uh, the way I evaluate on the last column this difference, you know, green being a good performance, um, red being a not so... Uh, being a bad performance, the more red uh, the bar is. I take basically the first call of the projected is how many points would you make in the season giving your current rating and expected is given the results that you have played, how many points would you expect in my simulations? And so if you exceed that you're actually doing bad and you see actually the Bournemouth and Brighton are the clear winners of that particular match day there. Uh, expected final standings may be a little bit more interesting, uh, but you know, uh, not much has changed except that City are more clear up top than they have been before. And you know, it's still Chelsea Spurs relatively close, close together. Our Arsenal lift themselves a little bit away from United. I think that's maybe up top the most in, 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 in interest part. And even the point against Liverpool did not do much for Fulham to get out of, out of it. But you know, things will start to move now. Upcoming round, we have an actually very interesting game on Sunday, 5.30, Chelsea against Spurs. I think this will tell us a lot of what these teams are made of. I also think Arsenal-Leicester, although I said Leicester is a little bit uh, down, but I think Arsenal really could lay down, down a marker. I want to see what City will do against Bournemouth. Um, and then I think all eyes will be also on Brentford uh, to see what Manchester United will do. Uh, Liverpool and Crystal Palace and the match day. Probably a must win for Liverpool at this stage in the season already. So yeah, that's it from me for uh, this week. I'm not sure if I will do a, a video next weekend. Uh, probably given that there's Chelsea Spurs, there's a good chance. But you know, we also have to start to Serie A and La Liga. So I might actually skip a week because we have then uh, also coming a um, uh, Manchester United Liverpool matchup, and it might be nice to have it all together. But I have to see how things uh, develop there. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel to see more videos like these, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!